Okay, I'd like to call to order the August Planning and Zoning um, meeting. Um, roll call, please, Andy. Commissioner Sveska? Present. Commissioner Holm? Absent. Commissioner Bruno? Absent. Uh, Chair Costello? Present. Commissioner Tantillo? Present. Commissioner uh, Barnes? Present. And Commissioner Scovich? Absent. And, and Bob is attending uh, via conference call. Okay. We have a quorum. Everybody uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, commissioners, did you have a chance to review the minutes from our last meeting in July? Does anybody have any comments, modifications of those minutes? If none, does anybody, would anybody like to make um, a motion to approve the minutes as written for the July 6th meeting? I move to approve the minutes as written for the July 6th meeting. Commissioner Svetska, any second? second? Commissioner Barnes seconds. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries to approve the meeting minutes from July 6, 2021. Okay, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing for the uh, Wolf Road Triangle PUD. Do we have to vote on that? No. Okay, are there any public comments regarding Wolf Road Triangle PUD? Uh, Chair Cassell, just, just, I'll just say this for the record. Uh, Staff is recommending closing this uh, public hearing and having the petitioner go through the process again. Uh, right now they're still reworking their design uh, and what they would like to have on the site. So our recommendation is to close the public hearing and then once they are ready to submit again uh, to have another public hearing based on the new plans. Okay, so uh, we will close without further comment or vote. Um, this time I'd like to close the public hearing for the Wolf Road development. Okay. And uh, now, review of the Joliet Road PUD application. Yeah, so uh, with us today is Jerry Dory, who is the main petitioner for this uh, application. and. Uh, a few weeks ago, they submitted their uh, application uh, pa packet or binder, which you all have in front of you. And uh, the plan tonight is just to go over some of the major items uh, to review them, uh, to see if you have any recommendations on uh, modifi for modifications, and then to uh, make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to uh, approve or not approve the uh, plan unit development application. Okay, commissioners, we got all these um, materials ahead of time. Uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to review. Um, any comments or questions for Mr. Dory? Sure, um, so my comment slash question is I see on the revised, sorry, can you guys hear me okay? I see on the revised plan that the trash um, bin area has now been moved to kind of a frontward facing on the Joliet Road um, side of the property. And I was wondering if there's any considerations to move that to somewhere with less visibility. Um, so it wasn't necessarily moved there. We just didn't have one placed prior. Uh -huh. um, for us to put it anywhere else would so that's why we, from a landscaping standpoint, you can see that we are gonna completely surround it with trees and that's a grassy area in the front of that. So you're not really gonna see it at all from Joliet Road. It's the, the truck will actually back in from our parking lot side. 
Um, it's the only spot basically where we could put it that we wouldn't lose like three to five parking spaces. So from a landscaping standpoint, if you see the landscaping design, mm -hmm. you can see that it'll be a red brick enclosure and the opening will be facing south, I believe that is. So, and then with arborvitaes around it, so you won't, it'll, it'll be landscaped as if it's not even there. That sounds. Uh, what is what is the parking count on the site as it relates to what the zoning requires? I think we're at. I'll, I'll have to check the exact number. I don't know. It's at seventy-one parking spaces, I believe. I mean, your your plan provides for seventy-one. Yeah, if you count them out, I believe it's it's high sixties or at least low seventies. We changed it so many times; it's going to be somewhere around there. I know we lost a couple parking spaces putting the the enclosure where it is? I would say really quickly for reference, uh, if you go to t tab eight of your binder, that shows the landscaping plan. Mm -hmm. And then tab nine has the, has a, also has the trash enclosure. But on tab eight, you can see the, the rectangular area, uh, just for reference. Okay, well I, Commissioner Sesco wanted to add anything else or do we want to just take this issue as a single one? Because I, I have <clears throat> significant concerns with putting the trash enclosure where you've indicated it is. It's really not yeah. in keeping with the image we're trying to create. And it, it states fairly clearly, not as clearly as I would have hoped when I went back to look, but that service related aspects of the buildings um, you know, need to be shielded from view behind. Um, I was trying to do a quick comparison to see what the original, the two site plans in the package don't match exactly, but the one that's in section five appears to be the, the version that was before the trash enclosure was added. And it looks like there used to be 16 parking spaces kind of lined up along Joliet Road. And now there's 15. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if there was any other impact besides the loss of that one space. Um, Putting it where it is is really has the less impact on the parking. If we have to put it anywhere else, we'll lose considerable parking spaces. Well, I, my suggestion would be since it does need to be somewhere where it's shielded from view. Um, but isn't the landscaping shielding it from view? No, I don't think that's, that's really serving the, the intent um, which is to put back of house operations things like things like dumpsters um, not on the primary corner of the site. Um, you know, maybe there's a possibility if it was at the the other end, you know, and it was it was tight up against the tollway right of way, you know, so that as someone was coming in along Joliet Road, maybe they wouldn't notice it <laughs> because they'd be coming out from under the bridge. A garbage truck to be able to make that turn with yeah. all the cars parked there is, is the concern of putting it in that corner. Um, the, other, the other option would be making some changes to the way that the, the parking spaces in the rear are configured at that, I don't know what to call it, the south west corner of the building, I guess, where it looks like on the floor plan, that's the workout room that you have indicated on the floor plan, which I presume would be shared, you know, by everybody Correct. who's that's using the building. That's in the interior of the building. Um, and, and that appears to have an outside door at that corner because that's an exit stair. But I'm wondering if there's a way um, to reconfigure in the back, get that, get that space or two spaces in the front back in where they were before, um, and then, the, the, and the then lose the spaces in the rear if you have to lose spaces. We're gonna struggle getting a garbage truck back there. We went through this in exhaustion, trying to find somewhere to put this dumpster, and the, because of us losing the space to the toll road, the toll road bought all that land coming west of the toll road. It really limited where we could put the building, because um, that was done somewhat after we started designing it, we, we, weren't, we weren't made aware that the tollway owned that much land. 
So it really, so we had, a, it forced us to move the building into the middle of the lot instead of being in the back of the lot. So we went through this for a long time, trying to find the best place to put it. And honestly, you were, you know, I believe you won't see it from Joliet Road at all. It'll be completely covered because there's a lot of grass between that dumpster and the street when you actually look at the landscaping layout. There'll be trees and arborvitaes all the way around it, but it's, it's almost impossible to put it somewhere behind the building because a truck will not be able to get to it. Mm. Okay. You, so you believe it's impossible to move that? I mean, we'll take suggestions, but I'm not, I'm not, we had our engineer on the phone with us for a long time. Us, he kept sending us different configurations and there was no way not to put the dumpster on that side of the building. And we felt that putting it in that far corner, it actually is not, when you're driving down Joliet Road, you see the entire building and it's in the corner and there'll be trees all around it. And then there's the taller trees there as well. So it's, there's a lot more green space there than anywhere else. And it allows the truck to basically pull in from Joliet Road and then back right into the dumpster and then pull out. Hmm. Any other comments? This is uh, Bob. I, can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. yes. Um, this is uh, going a little deep and probably uh, too much detail, but the selection of the plants that you mentioned, the Arbaviti, um, I would encourage you to look for another type of plant. Um, we do have deer in the area. I'm not quite sure whether deer would actually uh, be involved in the development area, but it, Arbavides are, are not resistant to deer. Uh, Plus, they require a certain amount of sunlight, and given the fact that they're bordering the, uh, the garbage site, um, they'll get insufficient sun, which they'll die off. So, if you could, if, you know, at your leisure, kind of look for an alternative plant that has the height and the width that you're seeking from an arborvitae, um, that would be great. I don't foresee any issue with us putting a certain type of plant there. Our goal today is just so that we all understand that it's our building as well. Like we have a high-end customers that come in there. So it's in our best interest. The place looks as nice as possible because it represents who we do as business. So we're not going to just put a dumpster in the corner and not make it look. You can tell by the design of our building that we're very serious that the place looks very high-end. So if it's, if it's not an arborvitae, it's going to be some type of green plant that will cover the entire area and then we're going to plant brand new trees all around there so it's i don't believe it's going to stick out as much as i understand your concern but it, we also have the same goal in the end is that the building looks beautiful well, and there's I mean, no issue. and that's why i mentioned it it's you know it might be a selection of an incorrect plant, and I'm asking you to reconsider, but I see that you're trying to do everything to beautify the area. It's just that that particular plant is uh, to be a mistake. So rather than recycle and replant, you know, and, I, and I understand what your intended goal is to cover it up as best as possible, you might want to select a different plant, is my, um, was my comment. I don't foresee that as being a problem at all. Okay. Any other comments or concerns? I just, I guess I'm just concerned that if this is where it resides, that we might be setting a precedent for any future developments. And I mean, you know, you exit off of the highway and like you go right by there. And I, I'm just concerned about, and, and I'm not trying to criticize your idea of beautification because I appreciate that. Um, but I just don't want this to turn to something that's going to be an eyesore. I mean, we can definitely make a recommendation that, that it's conditioned on heavily shielding the dumpster area and that be a, uh, an ongoing condition. I don't foresee us 
making that area an eyesore at all. Because again, that represents us as a company, so we want the place to be as beautiful as possible. Mm -hmm. We're obviously putting a lot of money into this building. And what else is going to be, so you have a perimeter of plantings, and then what's, what is the border, I guess, around that? You have a... Our goal is to completely shield that whole area with, I, I want to call it green area, but you know what I'm saying. And then we're going to plant brand new trees all along. Sorry, I, I might have asked that incorrectly. So is there maybe a solid, like a fence structure that you're planning on putting around that? Uh, you can see in the plan, it's a brick structure that looks exact. It's the same brick as the building. So it's, and how, how high is it? It will be seven feet or whatever the, you will not see the dumpster. It'll be a complete brick enclosure with a, a gate in front of it. Because the other thing that I often think of too is, you know, when you see trucks emptying out the large dumpsters, you have flyaway pieces of garbage right, that is out of your control and it just happens. And I would hate to have like pieces of paper flying across the road or get lodged in those beautiful trees that you've planted there that are now right in front of where everyone's driving to welcome them to our I, I appreciate that. I think we'll keep our grounds pretty manicured. Um, but they, there will be a brick enclosure around it that'll be the same color as the building and then it'll have a gate in front of it. So you'll never see the dumpster until, unless it's being emptied. You're, you're speaking about page 49 of 73, that drawing? I think it's slide 52. It should be the last page of the plan, building plan, I believe. Okay. I'm looking at uh, an image of the garbage structure with the brick and the gate, and that's on page 49 of 73, the agenda packet. That might help everyone out if they saw the visual. We don't have page numbers yeah. on our written. It should, if you go to the if you go to the plan design of the building, it should be the very last two pages of that that section. I'm pretty sure that's how we put it together. Yeah, hey, hey, if you go to tab six and yes, yes. that one okay. six and tab six and seven, the last page. So, so tell me, a brick enclosure, then. Oh, that's nice, to match the brick of the building. It'll be the same brick as the building is built with, and then there'll be a complete enclosure in front of it. So you'll never see it unless it's being emptied. And if I could play this back to you, um, the location of the dumpster was established because of the logistics that you were counseled that a dump truck couldn't get into... Um, any other area like the opposite corner um is, is that true um i would have to look at the I, I i believe we tried to put it in the opposite corner and there was some issues of the turning uh because it's a, i think it's a smaller space on that other side i, I I'd have, i'm sorry i don't have it in front of me i didn't bring it with me but of all the spaces we tried to put it that's where it had the where the truck had the easiest access to it and we were, um, because then the truck would have to go again around the building to get out, and the turning radius behind the building is too small. So the truck's gonna be turning in off of Joliet to come in? Is it could come in off of Vine. I mean, obviously, if there's a, I don't know what the weight restriction on Vine is, but it's, you know, it, it comes in however but that, that way it can come in, back up, and then pull right back out. Have you reviewed this with your preferred uh, garbage disposal company? Um, I haven't done that process yet, but I reviewed it with our engineer and our general contractor that build 10 of these buildings a year. And they're very versed in the locations of these things. I guess I'd be just curious to see what your preferred vendor would say in terms of swapping out that location for another one less uh, visible. Okay, any other concerns or comments? Well, in addition to that concern, which is significant for me, um, I think if we're looking at trying to lose one or two spaces on the site to accommodate the dumpster, we need to 
um, ask your site designer, civil engineer, to get a little more creative in how to do that somewhere maybe along the, I don't know what to call it, the western or the southwestern lot line. You mentioned that the tollway um, encroached a little bit on this property, um, purchased a sliver of it, and that was that to provide for drainage? What, what, what is going to be on, on the tollway property directly adjacent to this property? Okay, so the, are they planning to landscape that property at all, like along their edge? Okay. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what people are going to see as they immediately come out from under that bridge, you know, and sort of look to the right. What are they going to be seeing? They won't have an immediate opportunity to turn into the property. Um, you know, that'll be at this existing curb cut, um, or possibly that could shift a little bit you know, to the, to the east or the west. But um, along the south edge, I see you've got four spaces that are set up as parallel parking spaces. And I'm wondering whether there's a way to accommodate maybe two of those three that are on the west side as parallel spaces instead of angled or something like that, just so that you can create the turning radius that you need um, to get the dumpster over where the, I, I'm not sure what the circle with the 10 in it. I guess that's a, that's probably a parking space count. Um, Can I grab that extra? Is, is there. I apologize, I left mine in my car. Yeah, I think those, those three spaces that are right up against the building on the west side are gonna be hard for people to use because of the extremely tight turn already. Um, I just, I wonder if there's a way to open up that a little bit so that the turning radius is a little more generous and a, and a truck could do what it needed to do <laughs> over in that corner. Um, so that I'm just gonna be very frank with you. I don't think that's possible because the, the building is so close to the board. You know, the, if you look at, there's just a, there's just one lane there and the truck's not going to be able to, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any way. We thought this through to exhaustion. Like we tried to figure out where to, put this where it had the least impact and to be to be very honest i when when people come off of the joliet road they are not going to see that brick structure it is going to be completely covered in green, greenery and i mean you can hold us accountable to that however you wanted to do that it's i don't for that see for see that being a zero issue because again this is our building as well so is, if your concern is how it looks, our concern is double. So I'm not going to have an eyesore on my property. It's just not going to happen. I mean, you don't. You just know you don't. You don't really know me, but you can tell by the way we do our work. We. This is not. This to me is a zero issue. We are going to make sure that it's absolutely not a problem. It will be completely covered, and all the tree line along Joliet Road, as you can see, we're going to landscape that whole, the whole road. It's going to be a, it's going to, as they're coming off of 55 on a Joliet Road, it's going to be a, a whole, whatever the amount of feet is of trees and shrubbery, down the whole street, which you know is a considerable expense for us to do that. And just to reiterate, your your engineer says this is the only way that Again, will solve your issues. By us losing that land of the tollway, it really limited our ability to use the west end of the building. Mm -hmm. And I think if you drive to the property and you actually like see where that it's going to be, it's it's in the very it's that property is very wide. Uh, up on Joliet Road, it'll be in the absolute corner here. But there's a this if you the scale of this looks small, but it's actually a lot of green land in that corner that is not going to be used. That will be completely covered as you come down the road. Like it's it's not on it's not as close to Joliet Road as it may appear to be. Mm -hmm.
Any other issues that we? Um, the other question I had was, um, we had talked about how you were gonna delineate a safe way for your employees to cross, to get over to Vine and cross, and, and I don't see any accommodation yet made for that. Um, and I also, I don't see anything on this engineering drawing that indicates how it's going to be limited to a right in, right out um, curb cut on Juliet Road, like we talked about. It appears to still just be kind of the existing configuration of the curb cut I, without, oh, oh wait, well it used to have, it used to have that. I you can see a shadow of it on the aerial. <laughs> I verified with IDOT that the existing exit mid property in the, in, that you're looking at, the one closest to I-294, mm -hmm. will remain a full intersection also in addition to Vine Street. So you'll be able to is, come. Is there there's some sort of median along Juliet Road that was there that would prevent small, somebody? It doesn't prevent anybody from crossing. Oh, okay. And I and I got something in writing from IDOT regarding that. So they're okay with it being a full yeah. curb cut? Correct. I also found the same thing further north or northeast with um, the dome property. There is an access onto Joliet Road, which is a full right in or, or left out also that will remain in, in place. I would also mention really quickly, um, so after after last month's meeting, I, call, I called Jerry and we, we talked a bit about the possible um, pathway to the plaza. And I went out there and looked at it with Public Works and also just talked it through with Jerry. And the, and the thing is, if there was a pathway, if they built the pathway, for one, it would be quite expensive, uh, but two, it, there's no real place to connect it on the other side. It's just the, the Indian Head Plaza um, access point, but other than that, there's no real place to connect it. Um, that's just my quick comment on the pathway. Uh, I, so I think, so obviously they kept it out of their plans. And I, I personally, I don't see if there was one, if if it would do much good in walkability. Uh, but that's that was just my my feelings on it. So. So you're saying that because the, there's no pedestrian walkway in yeah. the Indian Head Plaza. Yeah. So it'd be just be walking right to the. It'd to be the a drive. walkway into the parkway to to the street, basically. Um, so I, I didn't see any way that it would be connected either now or in the short term future. Maybe many years from now if the plaza is redeveloped and things are reshaped, but as of right now, it would kind of be a pathway to nowhere is my, my thinking, so. Okay. Well, cur yeah, currently Vine Street is just completely unimproved. So I guess that's that's a broader PUD question, which is what's the nature of Vine Street and you know, potentially the the connection over to Wolf that the P that the PUD envisions, like what's the nature of that street going to be? Is there going to be a sidewalk and the ability for people to <laughs> to safely navigate it as pedestrians? Um, maybe at some point if that can be achieved, hopefully, you know, there there could then be safer passage for people. For now, it looks like maybe they'll walk out the curb cut and dash across the street and go up using the other curb cut. Yeah, that, that would pretty much ideal, be. But it's really all they can do right now. Yeah, yeah. Which is a lot of the village is like that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Other comments? It, is there a lighting plan? 
I'm sorry, is there a lighting yeah, plan? Yeah, there is. It's on the, it's on one of the engineering plans. It's included in the engineering plan. Let me, I'm sorry, let me. I, I might not have looked closely. Yeah, so we're gonna have all, you know, high efficiency lighting in the parking lot in those, uh, in the curbed areas. Number 17. Oh, I don't know if I have that. a draw. I think it's on the. Oh, for that. There's there no detail. Oops. Yeah, it's on the survey. Let me just look this real quick. It might be on number. Uh, Is that section five? Maybe the nine. Survey? Hold on. Let me just check. It looks like it's section t tab nine. I see, I see um, ah, the go. legend for light poles, power poles. Um. Yeah, so it's shown on this here. I see them on the legend, but I don't see any on the plan. I'm presuming you'll have some lighting will be mounted to the building. Yes. Yeah, but so is there going the there is this. going to be freestanding pole yeah, lighting? In all of the uh, par, you know, in all the um, islands on the parking lot there'll be lighting and then in the corners. You know what, I might have printed out the wrong page. I apologize. I actually went through this with him. There'll be lighting in the corners of all the of the lot, and then in all the islands, and then on the front of the building, there's gonna be lighting, as you can see on the plan. I can send that to you. I, I'm just, I'm wondering, this is a question more, I think, for Andy procedurally. Is there a way to go ahead and provide some, like, preliminary approval, but have the, um, like a lighting plan be you know pending further you can make a recommendation review, conditional like that. on that my concern there is the, you know the the lighting spilling over you know depending on the design of it it needs to be shielded so it's lighting your parking lot but not you know yeah so i understand that causing question. any issues for people that live across the yeah, street so it's going to be like all that. you know standard parking down lighting and then the building lighting just goes up and down okay okay yeah, what, what we will do uh, at the end when um, the commission eventually gives its uh, recommendation to the board, you can make that part of the um, part of the motion and part of the conditions. Yeah, the conditions of uh, of uh, the recommendation. So. Okay. Okay, and the, the other question, I guess, is about the signage because right now the elevations just show very generic. You know, it just says sign here. But you had indicated you'll have your business on the second floor. Correct. So you'll need to identify that. Yeah, so the on sign the front will of the look just like this on the very top of the building. Okay. It'll have a. In, the, in facing Joliet Road. Really chasing Joliet Road. And then we do, um, we are finalizing with a tenant right now that's going to take the whole first floor. Okay. Which is great. Um, so there'll be, if you look at the diagram number six and seven, it's tab six and seven. Thanks, whoever labeled these for me. Sorry, I didn't do that. Um, if you, you see where there's the two signs on the front, mm -hmm. well, there's only going to be one sign um, because we did that in case someone split the, you know, the first floor. So it, it's most likely going to be on the left-hand side, and the sign is going to look almost identical to ours. It's just it's called Atlas Wealth. So it's going to have like a globe, and then it's going to say Atlas Wealth to the right of it. That'll be on the left side. There'll be no sign on the right side. Okay. So the, the first floor plan is going to be a little bit different because they'll have people coming in on that left side, and then they'll be using the whole Correct. first floor, but people won't be coming in both entrances. No, so the, the main entrance will just be for the second floor. Okay. And then, so that way, we, we, don't, we didn't want a common lobby because we wanted to be able to leave and lock up and not have to worry about anyone else. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna have, so yeah, so they'll enter from the left, they're, 
their um, reception will be right there, and then the, the floor plan will be pretty close to ours, you know, following its way around. You know, with offices on the outside, they're gonna have a conference room in the middle and a kitchen in the back, and that's basically, they're gonna be their whole office. And then the workout room that you show at that back corner, you can, you can only get to that from, oh no, you, you, from upstairs, you'll be able to go down and get to it without disturbing Correct. The tenants on the first floor. Okay. So if the tenants want to use it, they have to get to it from the outside. We can actually get to it from our office and then go through the door. Okay. Selfishly, I it's for us, but we can. <laughs> Understood. It's a good idea in the winter. Um, I, I guess I just want to, because the, the generic elevation show signage kind of everywhere it could possibly be placed. We yeah, just, we just want to clarify that it's going to be one sign for, for you Correct. upstairs, one sign for them. And, and then that's it. There won't be a There's really no signage. advantage for us to put a sign anywhere else. Right. Because it's, it's not going to be seen. Okay. Are, are there um, findings of fact that we want to do for this or no? You, you know, the, for, okay. Okay. It's not a variance or a special use, so no findings of fact are okay. necessary. Great, thank you. So, so far, I think we're um, leaning toward if we make a recommendation, we want it conditional on um, um, heavily shielded dumpster area, a, um, an approved lighting plan, and uh, restricting signage to one per tenant. Is that what we're leaning toward? Well, and just that at, at some point closer to, I mean, when this is further along, just looking at the lighting plan and making sure that it doesn't negatively impact anybody offsite, mm -hmm. um, provides enough security lighting but doesn't impact anyone, and, and a closer look at the, at the signage itself once it's ready to be installed. The, the PUD requirements are that it be individual backlit letters on a, you know, on a, a panel rather than a box, you know, so there will be some issues related to, you know, like you said, oh, the globe and the so logo, you'll have to get a little creative, but I think it'll look pretty sharp if it's, you know, if those are sort oh, of so backlit. Even if the letters are individually lit, it has to be backlit, it can't be lit from internally? Not according to the way the PUD um, standards are written. Yeah, that will be difficult so to do on the... That's... If it is not a concern to the board, they do not... They can waive that section if it's not a concern to the commission or the board, um, whether or not... How the, how the sign is uh, designed. And, um, here, John, what? I would suggest just sending us a rendering. Mm -hmm. I have it done already. Okay. It's a logo, and then it just says the letters, and it's okay. It's um, it's not obnoxious. I guess would be the right word to say. <laughs> yeah, the the wording in the PUD is wall signs should be restricted to individually affixed letters. Painted wall signs, I mean, literally painted with a light shining on them. I guess is not intended and then also box signs are prohibited so it doesn't necessarily say they have to be backlit it's just that okay, the yeah, look so the look would be you know they're they're attached to the wall in a way that, that the logo an and the letters are separate you don't want the box with the panel of painted on there i get right, it it's right. going to be individual letters lit up with the logo mm -hmm. okay i can i i have that in my office i'll send it to you is there anybody on Zoom for a public hearing? No. No. Okay. Um, once we finish discussion, we're ready for a vote, right? Yes. Yes. Whenever. Okay. Um, yes. Commissioners, any further items for discussion? restate the items that we were um, seeking additional follow-up on? I think what I want to um, 
request is a, a motion for somebody to approve the application on the condition that um, we be assured that there's uh, the dumpster area is heavily shielded appropriately and that um, uh, with an approved lighting plan from the village and uh, approved signage from the village on those conditions. Uh, we make a recommendation to the board to approve. And if somebody wants to make that motion, we can do that now. I would, uh, I would add really quickly, I think that those are uh, good, good conditions to put on and that overall uh, village staff does recommend approving the application. Our, our feeling is that uh, while perhaps the ideal PUD concept would be somewhat different, uh, we think that the area has been so underutilized for so long and that we have here a developer who is uh, ready, able, willing to get going and started to beautify the area. Uh, the revenue that the development would bring to the village would be probably roughly around 15000 a year, which would be higher than most other businesses within the village. And so, we're, and we also think that it being an office building with the tenant actually being there uh, and occupying the building, it's a more safe investment, you could say, than retail or a restaurant that um, has much higher likeliness of failing. So because of those reasons, Village Staff does recommend approval. Okay. Uh, are you saying that, um, well, yeah, and it'd be up to the board to approve it anyway. Yeah. So um, yeah. we would just like to communicate to the board our discussion, I, I imagine. Yeah. I guess I, I would only just reiterate, I know this is a unique and very difficult site to work with. Um, I would caution that I, d I don't want <coughs> approving this trash enclosure where we are now, I guess the, the consensus is it's, it's going to be okay where it is as long as it is heavily shielded from view um, on the, uh, certainly along the Wolf Road frontage and uh, when the shopping center comes up for redevelopment, I think we need to be sure that service related uses are considered earlier in the site plan design process. and. Um, that we don't end up in a situation like that. I, I don't want this to become a precedent when other developers come along that it's okay to put your dumpster in your front parking lot. Hey, I totally problematic agree. at best <laughs> to yeah. do that. I think. I, I, mean, I totally agree. I think that this site has very particular uh, logistics to it. That we well for Indian Head Plaza already their trash receptacles are behind the building or to the side. Uh, I don't foresee it becoming an issue because of the particular logistics of this location. I think that for future developments uh, with more land to work with uh, and existing or existing receptacles and areas, I think that it should, I don't think it will become a precedent. That's just my thoughts. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion? that we recommend to the board to approve this application um, on the conditions that, um, as discussed, the dumpster area shall be heavily shielded and, uh, of course, the lighting plan and the signage plan will be approved by the village, will be submitted and approved by the village. I'll make that motion. Do I have to repeat it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Good. Motion made by Commissioner Barnes, second. And I'll second it. Commissioner Svesta, second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. We're pleased to give our approval. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. I'm gonna leave this with you, so. Okay, congratulations. Thank you guys very okay. much, have a great evening. Okay, you too. Are there any other any other business for the board here or the commission? Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. One second. Uh, Bob, was that a second? second okay. <laughs> All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We are adjourned tonight. Thank you. <laughs> See you in less than a month. <laughs>